Hi, hi. Today I'm going to do activity 4 using spreadsheet software. Now this is a sample assessment material for the IGCSE ICT exam in practical skills. And the paper gives us this information. Jonathan wants to record the daily sales of each newspaper. He has started a spreadsheet which he has saved as sales. So we now can open sales. Jonathan wants to improve the layout of the spreadsheet. Merge cells A1 to I1. So I select A1 to I1 and merge is over here. Enter the title Field Jones Sales in the merge cells and format the title to bold size 20. So Field Jones Sales and I select it. I select it also here on top and we need it to be in bold. 20 in size, so I'm going to enter 20 here. Enter. Next one is format the column titles in row 3 and make them bold and centered. Here's row 3. We're going to select it. Also bold. And here's the center. Format the cells C4 to H15 so that their contents will be centered. Here is C, so C4, up until H15 and also center. Format the spreadsheet to include appropriate borders and shading, appropriate column widths and row heights so that all the data is visible. Now to do that, we can double click here between 1 and 2, and that opens up here so we can see the title perfectly. Here we need to increase the cell size, so we double click on the border between A and B, and now everything is visible. What's needed though is borders and shading. Now we can select the titles and we can have a border around them. We can choose outside or thick box border, which probably comes out well. We could also select the whole table or underneath the titles and choose uh, all borders. Like this, it's very clear. With the shading, we can select these cells here. We could have them in light blue shading. And then this data, or the days of the week, could be in a little darker shading, like this. And sales and income could be the same as the newspaper and price, light blue. Okay, now we've done everything requested, and then we are told, Jonathan has not yet entered the prices of the newspapers into the spreadsheet. Enter the prices in column B using the information from the table. So on the exam paper you can see all the all the prices for the different papers and it's all in pounds. I'm going to start here in the first cell and that's for the post which is 22 pence so 0 0.22 the next one is let me see I did it wrong 0 0.22 enter 20 0.29 0.99. Now we've entered all the prices and then we're told to format the price column to currency. To do that we select the numbers. We can change it here or we can right click and say format cells. We select currency and then we will have to select the pound or sterling and we can find that by finding English UK and select OK and then we have it already in pounds. Now what we have to change here is ensure the prices are displayed with the pound symbol and two decimal places. And you can see that the numbers we've entered there they're missing some of them. So that happens if we increase decimal we get the two decimal places like was asked for, and we get the prices that we have entered before. Next task is Jonathan wants to use the spreadsheet for calculations. Enter a formula in cell H4 to calculate the total sales of the post during the week. So these are all the sales during the week, and we need to put the formula in here. Now always when we start the formula, we write the equals symbol. Now if we're going to add this up, we're going to write sum, so we can sum it up, and we open a bracket, 
we can click and drag to the last cell, close the bracket and press enter, and here we get the total. We could have also written it, or no, a better way is to select all the cells that are going to be added up, plus the cell where you want the outcome to appear, and we select AutoSum. It's the same way, a little bit simpler and quicker. Next task is enter a formula in cell I4, so I select I4, to calculate the income for the post newspaper. And beneath it says income is sales times price. So it makes, makes it even simpler for us. Then we know we have to put the equal symbol here. We open a bracket. We're going to multiply all the sales, so we're going to put the multiplication symbol, times the price. And then close the column and press enter, and here we got the income. Then it tells us, replicate the formula in cells H4 and I4 for the other newspapers. We got for the first one, and that means we can replicate the formula down. When it comes a plus symbol, we click and drag all the way down. We do the same thing for income. Go over the border here at the right corner and drag down. In suitable cells, enter a formula to calculate the total income for the week. Now, like I've introduced you, you can do this simply by selecting all the totals to get the main total. And leave an empty cell here, select it also, and click Auto Sum. And you can see the formula is correct. You're summing up cell I4 down to I15. Then it tells us, enter a suitable label for the total in an appropriate cell. Now a suitable label for total would be total or total income. And as we can't see everything, I'm going to double click to increase the cell size. Next task is, Jonathan wants to know the average sale figures for each day. In appropriate cells, enter a formula using a function to calculate the average sales on Monday. Now, if you know all the formula by heart, it's easy to go here. We're going to do it first for Monday. Equal symbol, as we always start with, write average. And it comes up down here also, as you can see. Then we open a bracket. And we're going to say what numbers we're going to use, which is all the ones for Monday. Close the bracket, press enter. Another way is selecting the numbers and leaving an empty cell here where you want the outcome to come. And we select average. And then it's calculated for us. In this case, though, we have too many decimal places. How did we fix that? We've gone here to decrease. And that's exactly what we need, because we only want two decimal places. Like we have the number here, instead of creating the formula, we can always replicate the formula to the other cell cells. And uh, yeah, it said copy this formula across for the other days of the week. The last task here is sort the table in alphabetical order of the newspaper, which means we're going to select everything here, not the totals, of course, because this is just for the newspapers. And to put it in alphabetical order, you have your sort and filter. Click the arrow and select the first one, as you can see, in this alphabetical order. And then check it. Yes, C, D, E. It's in alphabetical order. We've done everything requested. And usually in the exam, you'll have to copy or print screen the results and show them in a Word document where you have your header and footer. Uh, if you have to show formula, you will have to go to the formulas tab and you have to click on show formulas. But like this, it's going to, um, if you're going to print this out or if you're going to copy it like this or print screen, uh, it might be too big. And especially if you have to print this out in Excel, you're going to see if you go to print, and print preview. Let me see if I choose it correctly. Print. Print preview. We're missing. We only got Thursday. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to decrease the cell sizes like this. Very simple. And also this one's too big so we can make it exactly as big as it's needed to show all the formula. 
We're still a little bit short, so here we can make some space. Um, even here we can decrease it a little bit. Also here, we're very close to getting the income, and I think it won't matter. Let me see, here we have more space. And if we slowly carry on like this, we are going to be able to... Yes, income is already on one spreadsheet, and you can see the dotted line. It shows you that everything that goes on J will be on the next page, and F to 31 is also on the next page. But this would be perfect to show the formula and that you've done everything. You've used shading, you've used borders, you formatted it bold and bigger. Here are the titles. Formula is correct. Total income could have been in bold. Let's hit stand out, and as that's uh, the total, and it's a number that you would want to be looking at, it's good to have that in bold. Okay, great. Now, the next part of the spreadsheet exam says, Jonathan has recorded the income from some of the items in the shop over a four-week period. He has entered the data into a spreadsheet called Weekly Sales. So that's another spreadsheet. So I'm going to minimize this one. And here's Weekly Sales. So I'm going to open that up. And there it says, Jonathan would like to present some of the information as a graph. He wants to pin the graph to a notice board in the shop. Now, all the text that we're given in the exam is telling you how you should be doing the activities. If it's supposed to be hanged up in a note, on a notice board, it makes sense that it has to be big and clear for the person to, to read it. And probably if you stand far away from it, that you still can see the contents. Uh, it says, create a graph which compares the sale figures for each item for week one and week four. So we got here the four weeks, but we only need one and four. Do not include the totals. Enter a suitable title and access labels. So I need the items, so I'm going to click and drag, not the totals. Then I have to hold down the control key on the keyboard to select week one without the totals and week four without the totals. Now I've selected what I need to create the graph. I go to Insert. I select your column. And you can choose whichever you want, but I'm going to choose the first one here. Now, as it doesn't have any of the titles, and uh, there was a request for suitable title, you're going to go into the Layout tab and find here Chart Title, Above Chart. Now, when we enter a title, we always have to think about something descriptive. As this is comparing prices, a good title would be for four of sales, of sales, four weeks, one and four. And then we can use an and symbol, one and four. Now, since it's a title, let's give it a bigger size. This would be fine, and then we can always increase the size. This is going to go on a notice board, so we know it has to be clear and simple to read. Okay, now, there are missing titles here. Back to the layout, axis titles. First, we want the horizontal one, and below. And we're going to write, this is for the all the items, so let's just call it items. Now I'm going to select the text and I'm going to increase the text size also. So this is 32, maybe too much. 28 is fine. Now we need the other axis title. So we go to layout again, axis titles. Now it's the vertical one. And let's present it like this. And this would be the sales. And now we have to have the same size as before, keep everything consistent. That means we can write here 28 and enter. See, 28. And then we get the same title sizes, except this one is smaller than the other titles, so I'm going to increase the size also. That looks better. 32, it's a little bit bigger. We could even make these titles also stand out. Or increase the size. Let me see if we drag this. Then we right click here and we select font 
and let's increase it a little bit put in 11 or 12 that should be enough okay and now it's clearer but that changed all the sizes unfortunately so once again make this stand out sales and items can also be a little bit larger so we had it what for 18 last time it was 28 well this is enough 80 just double click and then it will select the text and 80 now as it overlaps no oh, doesn't that's fine now the title has moved so we're gonna center it that's perfect now, usually you'll have to copy your results to a Word document and then later print it out. So we're going to copy it and I'll show you how to open it in Word. I'm going to open a Word document. And Control V to paste quickly. Now, it would be better to put it into landscape orientation, but read carefully what it says in the exam. Now, it says, for example, Copy the graph into a Word document, then you have to have the name there, task SS3, so always use text boxes or enter the names that are needed. Remember it is to be displayed on a notice board, so it's very clear that we have to make it clear for any audience. Now this, I think, couldn't be any clearer. This looks very good and easy to read. And as you can see, it's only in 70%. And this is how it would be on the notice board. Brilliant. Now that's done. And that's it for the for the activity. And it was 24 marks you could have gained for this activity alone. Now I hope this was clear and simple. And feel free to comment on any improvements or additional features you are struggling with. Bye-bye.